Welcome to Modding Fallout New Vegas Part 2. Uh, this is a tutorial that follows on from Part 1 and in this one we're going to install Project Nevada. Uh, there are two aims in this particular tutorial. The first one is to get Project Nevada installed and working along with um, the needed compatibility patches that will stop it from breaking any other mods you have um, and also make it work nicely with any other mods you have. Um, for some of you that will be a new concept. Um, the second aim is to get what is essentially a mod that alters the HUD and user interface and to get it working with an already modded game. You will have to have New Vegas Script Extender installed as Project Nevada requires it, um, but we will not be covering that in this tutorial. So. Uh, what is Project Nevada? Well, Project Nevada is an extremely large mod. Um, it adds an, an incredible amount of things, actually. It adds armor, it adds weapons, uh, a lot of cool new weapons, like the cryo pistol. But it also adds a lot of new functionality and features, like bullet time, um, sprinting, visor overlays, um, vision modes, and just so many other things. You, you just can't even begin to, to list them. Uh, it also has a lot of gameplay rebalances, um, so it makes the game a little tougher, a little bit more enjoyable, etc. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the list of things is incredible. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention the cybernetic implant overhaul, which is immense. So it's well worth installing. We're also going to be introducing you to the concept of compatibility patches, um, and those are basically small mods that help two or more mods work together. We're going to cover that in more detail in a later part of these tutorials, but for now we'll just cover the basics. So let's get started by downloading the files we require to install Project Nevada. Go along to their website and download the files. They come as a RAR archive, I believe. And it's rather large, by the way, so it may take some time to download. <laughs> so while we're waiting for that, let's go along to the Project Nevada patches. Uh, that's a separate page, and it contains all the compatibility patches. We are going to download the DLC compatibility patch. Uh, I'm assuming you've got the DLC. If you don't, you don't need this one, but... Uh, we're going to work on the assumption you do. So download that one. Um, download the Rebalance Rebalance uh, patch. This is uh, basically an update. Um, fix a few things. And finally, WMX or WME. I have WMX installed at the moment, so I'll download that compatibility patch. If you're using WME, you obviously download that one instead. So now we're going to extract those four downloaded files into folders. Um, one quick thing of note is you'll, you will see a folder called FOMOD inside the archive. Uh, this means it's probably got a script and is in scripted install. Don't worry about that for now. Um, you again unpack all of these files with the default folder name. Do all of them including the compatibility patches so that we have four folders ready to be turned into FOMOD packages. So once we've got that, we open up our package manager in Fallout Mod Manager and create from folder four FOMOD packages. Uh, begin with the, the main one. As you can see, it's rather large and takes quite some time. Uh, don't worry too much about it. The remaining uh, files, the compatibility patches, they're pretty quick. They should happen in just a few seconds. In fact, you may not even notice them. Okay, so we're going to end up with four FOMOD packages ready to install. But before we do the installation of Project Nevada, we need to get things prepared by deactivating three of our existing mods. Um, and there are very good reasons for this. The first one is Unified HUD Project. Deactivate that. The next one is the Immersive HUD. Deactivate that. And the last one is the Mod Configuration Menu. 
deactivate that as well. Um, the reason for the mod configuration menu being deactivated is Project Nevada actually installs its own version, which will overwrite the one you've installed, um, but it only works for Project Nevada, which is uh, not good for us because we have plenty of other mods. So we will need to reinstall MCM again after Project Nevada. So activate Project Nevada now. Click install and it begins. Yes to all when prompted and it's a little time consuming. Deactivating Unified Hood and Immersive Hood is very important. Um, I'll explain that in some detail later on as to why we had to do that. Um, okay, so that's installed. Now we're going to install the DLC support. That was very fast. The rebalance update and the WMX support. Activate that. So now activate the mod configuration menu again. Go up, activate immersive HUD and finally activate unified HUD project. You'll notice Project Nevada has now been detected. That's good. And finish that. Then we can close the package manager and check out the new ESMs and ESPs. So Double check all the ESMs are selected. On mine, for some reason, it just doesn't seem to select Project Nevada. Don't know why. Um, and you can change the load order of these ESMs if you wish. The only reason I do it is so that they appear in that order in the MCM menu. It doesn't really matter for, for this mod. Then go along to the ESP files and make sure they are all selected. Again, you can see a couple of them are not selected for me. I make sure they're selected. Um, Again, they, that, that might not happen on your system. Okay, now one of the things we really need to make sure about is load order. Uh, load order is important because if you have a file that requires another file to be loaded before it, and it does not load before it, the game will crash. Uh, it's as simple as that. You'll you'll know instantly you've got a problem. You will not be able to play. Um, and for Project Nevada, this is only going to affect your ESPs. Uh, but for example, if you check the Project Nevada Rebalance ESP and the Project Nevada Rebalance Rebalanced ESP in your Fallout Mod Manager, you will notice in the list of masters down here, um, we have three required masters Fallout NV.ESM, Project Nevada Core ESM. Project Nevada Rebalance ESM. All three of those files must, must be loaded before Project Nevada Rebalance Rebalanced.esp. Uh, now, two of them are ESMs, so they will automatically be loaded before. That's just automatic. You don't really need to worry about it. The ESP, on the other hand, you do. If, for example, I swapped these around, so Rebalanced, Rebalanced, Rebalanced came before Rebalance, my game would not load. Um, things also to look for are, say, Project Nevada WMX. This has got four. One of them is Weapon Mods Expanded.esp. Therefore, that must come before it. Um, so when you find mods talking about the load order, this is what they're talking about. Any mod must be loaded after anything it uses as a master file. Okay, so our load order's done, and it's time to check the game. Now we're checking for two things. We're checking to see that Project Nevada has installed correctly, and we're checking to see if we still have iHUD and the MCM menu correctly working. So, the fastest way to check this is in fact to actually check the MCM menu as soon as we load a game. Um, in it, we will expect to find two menu options for Project Nevada, Core and Rebalance. And we will also still expect to see all of our other mods. And Immersive HUD, iHUD, is what a good one to check because it has three menu systems and that will only appear if you've installed correctly. So there we go, Project Nevada Core, Rebalance, no problem. And we see we've got iHUD and it's working. Menu is working. This means we have got a successful install. 
Okay, so why did we deactivate Unified Hood project before installing Project Nevada? Well, the simple reason is we want to run Unified Hood project after we install any mod that affects the user interface or the heads up display. Um, and if you go to the U Unified Hood project webpage, you can see a list of those mods. And my basic advice is anytime you install, upgrade, or uninstall any of those mods, you should run Unified Hood project straight afterwards. It may not be necessary, but it may save you from crashing whenever you start the game. So now let's look at what would happen had I not deactivated iHood and the mod configuration menu. Um, basically, when Project Nevada is installed on top of those two mods, um, it does a number of things. First of all, it overwrites the iHood um, changes. The, for example, the grenade icon, which was iHoodified, as I call it, when you installed iHood. Uh, that is removed by the Project Nevada installer. And the mod configuration menu that comes with Project Nevada overwrites one specific file and your game no longer knows which version of MCM it is in fact using and in fact believes that it's using version 1. Now this will allow many mods to work, many mods that don't require 1.1. Well one mod that does require version 1.1 is iHUD and so iHUD refuses to give you the full menu. And so as you'll see now when we load up here is what will happen. Uh, you'll immediately notice the grenade icon in the bottom right hand corner will not disappear. No matter how many times I press the I button, it keeps coming back. And now if I go, oh there you go, mod configuration, as soon as I open it, it warns me, it says you do not have 1.1 installed. Which is not actually true, but Project Nevada is confusing the system. So now you'll see Many of the other MCM mods are working perfectly, but not iHUD. When you click on iHUD, nothing appears. So your menu is just not working. And that is basically what happens if you do not uninstall those two mods before installing Project Nevada. So how do you fix it if you've done that? Well, basically, you actually just do what you should have done to start with. You deactivate Unified HUD, you deactivate the mod configuration menu, and you deactivate Immersive HUD. You then activate them again. So activate the mod uh, configuration menu, activate Immersive HUD, and activate Unified HUD. You don't need to reinstall Project Nevada at all. Just deactivate those three mods, activate them again, um, and it will fix everything. It's as simple as that. Now if we uh, go back to the game, this time we should find our menu and our grenade icon hiding exactly as it should. And that's it. The grenade icon is now iHoodified again. The MCM menu is working perfectly and you're ready to go. So. I hope this tutorial helped and I hope you enjoy Project Nevada.